to God's house for worship today. Welcome to all joining online. Sorry we're a little late. I was busy talking to everybody outside, so my apologies. Welcome, everybody. It's, this is the sixth Sunday of Easter, our Easter journey concluding with next Sunday being where we'll be celebrating the Ascension of our Lord, which is actually Thursday this week. Uh, obviously, that's our church calendar today, today on the secular calendar as well. It is Mother's Day, so a happy Mother's Day uh, I, I do know that a day like Mother's Day can be a day full of joy and happiness. It can also be a day that, that has some sorrow and sadness in it as well. So wherever you are this morning, the Lord meets you with his love, and he chooses you, to chooses to live with you, to forgive you, to strengthen you, to love you each and every day. And that's the theme of our worship today. If you're here in God's house, you see the bulletin cover very clearly. Chosen is our, our theme word today and what we focus on, uh, especially from John chapter 15. A couple of announcements. Uh, next Saturday, there's an LWML Bring your own lunch, uh, just get together for fellowship uh, outside in the parking lot. Uh, so the announcement's on the bulletin board out there, so just take a look at that uh, for any of the women of our congregation, the church family that are interested in being a part of that. Also wanted to say a big thank you today to our preschool staff. This last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and it's just a joy to have a, a wonderful staff working. So we, we say thank you to, to Donna and Jennifer and Karen and Michelle and Shelly and Denise. Also to our board. I see a couple of our board members here today, preschool board, to their hard work as well uh, to move our preschool forward. So a big thank you to all of those things going on. Having said those things, it's a joy to be together this morning as the Lord feeds us again today. It is our Easter celebration, so we uh, begin today with one of our wonderful Easter hymns. I invite you to stand as we sing together, Christ the Lord is risen today. of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join together in our psalm this morning. It is Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break it forth into joyous song and sing with praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it, and the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together. Before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We join together in singing our hymn of praise. This is the feast. <laughs>
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated as we turn our attention to the assigned readings this morning. First reading is from Acts, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing this people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson today is from 1 John, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel and as we sing together our Alleluia. according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together to confess our common faith today using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We remain standing as we join together in singing our sermon hymn today, Lord, tis not that I did choose thee.
This sixth Sunday of Easter, much grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Text for our message today is from the Gospel account, John, the 15th chapter, these last couple of verses. You did not choose me, Jesus said, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is our text this morning. So about three years ago, in fact, I think it was three years ago this past week, Deaconess Tiffany and I were returning home, preparing to fly home following our 25th wedding anniversary celebration vacation. We had checked our luggage, we'd passed through security, we'd gone through the passport checkpoint, and now we approached a, a final uh, point of entry, a final security point where we needed to scan our boarding passes at the automated uh, tiller thing there, and it would let us through. Well, Tiffany went first and scanned hers and went through and was ready to head over to the gate, waiting for me. I scanned mine, a red light came on. It didn't work. I tried again. What am I doing wrong? I've never used one of these things before. Didn't work. I tried the one next to it. Didn't work. I looked hopelessly at the security officer next to me, and she walked over and used her little scanning gun and scanned it and looked at me and said, you've been chosen. You've been chosen by a random draw. You've been chosen for an extra special security check. <laughs> Boy, I was feeling so extra special right about then. <laughs> Thankfully, it all worked out, and we arrived home safe and sound. So often in life, it's fun to be chosen for something. Chosen at the security checkpoint for a little extra security? Not so much. But thanks be to God that the Lord's church doesn't operate like an airport security checkpoint. Jesus doesn't choose you because he gives you an examination. He wants to examine you a little bit closer. Jesus doesn't choose you to put you through some extra checking or to decide if you're okay to come in. Jesus doesn't pick you because you're wiser or stronger or richer or smarter than others. Jesus chooses you for one simple reason, because he loves you. Because he loves you. That love has its origin in Jesus himself being loved and its intention is that you, whom he loves, will then love others. These things I command you, Jesus says, so that you will love one another. Jesus says, and as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you, so abide in my love. From eternity, Jesus has been loved by the Father, and he now invites us to remain in that love, to stay in that love, to be grounded in that love. He doesn't say to you, hey, that, that love of mine, why don't you go out and find it? He doesn't tell you to make a decision for you. He doesn't tell you to go choose it for yourself. Jesus has now chosen you in love. And he invites you and chooses you to abide in that very love that he's already given you. He invites you and chooses you to be branches connected to him, the very vine who continually provides nourishment and strength provides growth and love in your life. As you stay connected to him, what do you think about when you hear people talk about that word love? It can mean so many different things to so many different people in so many different circumstances. Do you think of a young couple walking hand in hand down the beach? Do you think of a Valentine's Day and the warm, fuzzy feeling you get inside? You think of the elaborate YouTube video that some guy posts showing how he made this elaborate proposal to his girlfriend for prom. <laughs> Today we want to understand that such a concept of love, an emotional concept, as important as that is in our relationships, is but a part of true love. It's not the whole thing. Today we want to explore the motivation behind the fullness of Christian love a love modeled after the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus, a love that moved Jesus to say to you, I choose you. And indeed, he did choose us in his love. 
But how do you think Jesus would define that word love as we think about it in our heads? How do you think Jesus would define it? He'd certainly use words to define that love, but he would also define love with his actions as well. And that love begins with our Heavenly Father, right? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And that example of love continued with Jesus as he walked this earth in so many ways. We read in John chapter 13, having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them to the end. And we're shown what he did that night. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. 1 John chapter 4, the chapter just before our text today in the epistle lesson. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Sent him to be the perfect satisfaction of God's law and the perfect payment for our sins. That's love. For Jesus, love did not stand on words alone. Jesus didn't just speak love, but he did love. Love caused Jesus to sacrifice his time, his energy, his personal comfort, even his very life in death. Jesus gave all of his love to us sinful human beings who at times can kind of be unlovable, can't we? Jesus didn't choose to love the disciples because they loved him first. No, if you read the accounts of the gospel, you kind of see where the disciples weren't so good at that. They might have talked a good game. In fact, the night of our text, early that night, Peter and all the disciples They were sure that they'd make any sacrifice necessary for Jesus. They would even die with him. You know how that turned out. They slept while he prayed. They fled when he was arrested. Peter denied even knowing him. Disciples Disciples were good with love that has words, but when it came time for the action, for the sacrifice, even their words bailed them out. Peter declaring, I don't know the man. I don't know him. I'm not with him. No, Jesus didn't choose to love the disciples because they chose to love him. In fact, he's quite emphatic in his words here. You did not choose me, but I chose you, Jesus said. And indeed, Jesus did choose the disciples. And he chooses us too. He chooses us who are no more lovable or reliable than Peter or any of the other disciples. Us who at times have have bailed out as well on those opportunities that come our way. Opportunities to tell friends and and neighbors out loud right before them when our faith is being ridiculed or, or Christ is being mocked. We've had those opportunities to say, I love Jesus and he's my savior. But we've failed. We've kept silent. We've done so in the face of moral or ethical issues with our family or friends or community instead of speaking up for those things that Jesus would have us speak up for. We have at times with all of our unkind and gossiping and cursing and unloving words hurt others and shown ourselves to not be very lovable either. So why would Jesus choose us? Yet that's exactly what he did for the people then and for us now. How true it can be. The people who don't show themselves to be very lovable, Jesus says, I love you. I love you, and I provide for you. I love you. Here's some fish and bread. Here's your daily bread. I love you. Now get up and walk. I love you. You can now see. I love you. I lay down my life for you, my friend. I love you, Jesus says. Your sins are forgiven. That's love that you don't have to search for or track down or choose for yourself. That's love that has chosen you. So then what is love to each one of us as we live as his children loved by him? How would we define love? Well, we do indeed use words, but we use actions to show love as well. Because Jesus' command is a simple one. When asked what the greatest commandments are, what did he say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and love your neighbor 
as yourselves. It's simple. It's a simple idea. But those words sound so out of place as Jesus speaks them on the last night of his life. Gathered with the disciples, soon to walk to the Garden of Gethsemane together, Jesus continues to teach them and, and prepare them. He talks to them about love and loving others, but, but on this night, the mood is unsettled. It's uncomfortable. Everybody knew that something was about to happen. A night that would soon be filled with betrayal and hatred and rejection. Jesus says in the middle of all of that, I love you. You love one another. How can there be love in such an unloving night and time for Jesus? Well, we might ask the same question about our world today. How can there be these words of Jesus in our world today? But they are for us. Jesus says, I love you and have chosen you, so love each other. And that might be easy to talk about here in the church. It's comfortable here, here within the walls of our sanctuary. But when we go out in the world, you and I know that we see a different picture. We see hatred. We see people angry at each other. We see society up in arms over so many issues that cause people's blood to boil. We see Christians persecuted for proclaiming their faith, for standing up in the midst of moral issues like the definition of marriage to be between one man and one woman, or the value of human life at every stage from conception to natural death. We see betrayal, friendships that are hard to keep in relationships that seem so fragile. We see rejection where people are lonely and kids are bullied and people are looking for acceptance and support that doesn't know, don't know where it comes from. These things are true for others out in the world, but they're true in our lives at times as well. How hard is it for us to love in such a time as ours? Yet we can do it. Because there's a secret to loving others. Simply put, the secret is Jesus' love for us. The secret is remaining in Jesus' love as he's encouraged us to do and promised to be there to strengthen us to do. The secret is following the example of Jesus' love. It means that we strive to love not only with our words but with our actions as well. Those actions show that to love Jesus means to serve as Jesus served. In fact, that's why our LCS church family out in the, the narthex here, what does it say on the wall? We are a community of faith centered in Christ called to serve. We love by service and sacrifice. We love not just by words, but by deeds. We love by laying down our life for others, not necessarily literally, although that may be the case for some. But in, as we give of our time, as we give of our comforts and of our treasures, we are laying down our life for others. As we serve our church family in Jesus' name, as we serve our community in Jesus' name, we show love, not to get something or to earn something for ourselves, but to do something for others who are in need. And yeah, we know that's hard because it requires looking outside of our busy lives and, and talking to those around us who we, we may not know to, to learn of their hopes and dreams, their desires, their wants. It means actively seeking to help others outside our social circles or maybe even people we feel uncomfortable with as we talked about last week. So often the kind of love of which Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, that that's not always comfortable, and it means sacrifice. But what a great reminder in our epistle lesson this morning. We read there, this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. It doesn't have to be a burden for you to love one another, because Jesus has shown you how and promised to strengthen you to do it. You follow his example as you sacrifice to show the love of Christ. You sacrifice for those closest to you and, and sometimes for those you don't even know. You sacrifice in your vocation as husband or wife or, or mother or father or single person or son or daughter or neighbor or friend or employer or employee or someone who's retired. Chosen by Christ, abiding in his love, 
you can now love and serve. That's exactly what Jesus did for you and me. Sin had threatened to keep us separated from God. So Jesus left this heavenly home to become flesh and dwell among us. He came to give his very life on the cross, thinking not of himself, but of all of us who were so desperately in need of being restored in our relationship with our heavenly father. And because of his death and resurrection, we have that restoration. We are saved. We're saved from the sin that tries to pull us away from knowing love and showing love to others. We are forgiven and we have eternal life with him. As you live out that joy-filled, hope-filled, love-filled life of faith to the fullest, Jesus' command stays the same. Love one another. And while the reality of the world out there stays the same, you are changed. You are changed through the great love that Jesus has shown to you. As you read and hear his word of promise and hope, As you daily remember your baptism where you were washed clean and marked and claimed and redeemed as his own. As you receive his body and blood for your forgiveness and strength, you are changed. All of this given to you simply because of his love for you. Jesus has chosen you to abide in his love. Chosen you to abide in that love that sacrificed for you so that you can abide with him forever. You are chosen by Christ in his love. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen. Now the peace that passes all understanding. Guard our hearts and minds through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our worship continues this morning as we approach the throne of our Lord's grace and mercy with our prayers today. I'm going to remain seated for the beginning portion of our prayers this morning. In addition to those who we've been praying for, we have one addition today. Uh, We're going to be praying for the family of of James Montgomery. James is the grandfather of uh, Ben Montgomery, Michaela Gierke's husband. So we'll be praying for the family uh, of Ben's grandfather, lifting them all up in prayer today. With that in mind, we bring to the Lord the prayers before us, the prayers of our hearts and minds today. We pray, blessed God, you do not reject our prayers or remove your steadfast love from us. Hear us now and answer us in your love for your whole church and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you invite us to freely come and hear your word. Bless and increase our faith that we may understand how you have chosen us in Christ's love to be your children. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of all, you make known the good news of peace through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless and direct the work of our missionaries, pastors, deaconesses, teachers, and all church workers, that in this and every nation there would be people who fear God, do what is right, and believing in Jesus, receive forgiveness of sins through his name. We especially thank you on this day for our Open Arms Preschool staff, Ask that you would shower them with your blessings as they continue to share the love of Jesus with these little ones and their families. We lift up to you today Donna and Jennifer and Karen, Shelly and Michelle and Denise, and ask that you watch over them and lead them through this end of the school year strengthened by you. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, you rule this world by your established authorities sometimes in ways that we don't always understand. Yet in the name of Jesus, we ask you anything freely as friends and sons, chosen by you in your love. Bless our nation's leaders, our armed forces, our police forces, and cause them to serve wisely for our good. Give earthly peace and justice that is in accord with your commandments and the order you have revealed. Bring an end to injustice, violence, and disdain for your truth. And let us receive all good with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, the giver of all that is good, grant your healing and support to all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity today. We especially ask you to be with Bruce and Bud and Annetta, with Brigitte and Deborah and Wayne Johnson, with Sally and Gary and Molly, 
with Tony and Annette and Emily, with Joe and Don and Jimmy, with David and Mrs. Wong and Joyce, with Rick and Kevin and Sid, with Ken and Joanne, with Scott and Lorraine and Ingo, with Diana, with Al's mother Vera and Betsy's mom Betty, with Martha and Nick, with Monique and Chris. Bring healing according to your will, strengthen their affliction and hope in Christ who chose them in his love. We lift up to you the family and friends of James Montgomery as they mourn his death. We pray that they would know of your peace, your comfort, and your presence, and that they would have the hope and the resurrection to eternal life with Christ for all who live and die in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, at the death of your Son, you gave the testimony of your Spirit in the water and blood that poured from his wounded side. Grant that having received this testimony in the water of baptism, we may also receive it in the blood and body and blood of Jesus in the Holy Supper, and so overcome the world by our faith in him who chooses us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Conclude our prayer of the church this day with a litany of motherhood. Father of glory, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in his incarnation, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. He submitted to his mother, honoring and obeying her, so fulfilling the commandment where we have not. Teach us to honor our mothers aright, loving, obeying, and giving thanks for them as is fitting in your sight. On this Mother's Day, we pray that the church would be a caring and healing reflection of your presence to all women throughout the many seasons of motherhood. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, to those who mourn the loss of a child, to those who have experienced loss through miscarriage or failed adoptions or children who have run away from home, we, the church, are here with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day, teaching the next generation the fear of the Lord, to those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, to those who have given up their child for adoption, to those who carry the silent pain of infertility, fraught with test and disappointment, we, the church, are here with you. To those whose season of motherhood was never meant to be, yet are called to be a mother to others. To those who serve as godmothers and as mothers to children from a previous marriage, loving them as their own. To those who have warm and close relationships with their children. To those who have disappointments and heartache and distance from their children. We, the church, are here with you. To those who mourn the loss of their mother, to those who experience difficulty and hardship from their mother or have been abandoned by them, to those who have opened their homes and hearts to adopt a child, to those who care for children with special needs, disabilities, and chronic illnesses, both seen and unseen, we, the church, are here for you. To those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, to those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, to those with mothers who are mentally ill, to those who have no memory of their mothers, to those who grieve the pain of past decisions, to those young women who will be mothers one day, we, the church, are here with you. We, the church, lay these litany of prayers at the feet of the one who loved us to the point of death, even death on a cross, the one who from the cross asked John to look at Mary and said, Behold your mother. This Mother's Day, we acknowledge Christ's care for us in all facets of life, having chosen us and molded us into a new family through his own precious blood. Lord, continue to make us mindful of the joys, pains, sorrows, and triumphs of those who have been bound to us as a church family. We invite you to stand as we continue our prayers today. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We sing together. Now thank we all our God.